general. Uh, could, you turn right, off the, uh, could you turn off the uh, screen share? Oh, uh, yes. Oh, yes, I certainly can. There we go. Good. All right. There was once a Hasid of the Shpolazid. The Shpolazidi was the Saab, the grandfather of the city of Shpola. I guess Shpola was a city in the Ukraine. Shpola Zedi was a very great Sadiq. Anyway, this Hasid, this follower, he used to sell. How did he make his, his living? Jews were barred from a lot of a lot of occupations, but they could sell things. They could be salesmen. So he opened up a little. He had a little table, and he put on the table little buttons and needles and small things. And he would um, sell these things, set up in the market. <clears throat> and in the market, there were other, you know, hundreds and hundreds of other little tables. And, and, uh, <clears throat> and the counters and people were selling their wares and food and stuff like that. And he was also there. There came a, uh, a garrison of Ukrainian soldiers. They had probably just come back from war games or for something. In any case, they all came en masse into this market. They were all bored. They were all going to go to this pub or something and get drunk. But as they were going, so the one of the soldiers, a big, huge soldier with a, a mustache, he saw this little Jew standing over there, and he said to the Jew, Hey, what about this? He pointed to something at one end of the table. How much is this? When he said that, he reached underneath the Jew's table. When the Jew turned her over to show him this little needle or button or whatever it was, he reached underneath the Jew's table, and he felt that there was a little can there. And this can had in it, that's where the Jew would put his money that he made. Penny by penny, ruble by ruble, kopka by kopka, whatever it is. He would put the money in there. And he shook this little can underneath. As soon as he did that, the Jew looked at him and he took the can, he ripped it out from where it was and he emptied what he had in his pocket and he threw it on the ground and he walked away. So the Jew said, hey, you stole my money. Hey, give me my money back. Hey, police. Stole of course, the police aren't going to stop a soldier. So he covered over his little <clears throat> table and he told the person next to him, please watch the table. And he ran after the soldier. Ran after him. He stole my money. This is the money that he was, this is his whole months. It was near the end of the month. And this is the money that he would have to live on for the whole next month. <clears throat> so he ran after the soldier and he's running and he can't, you know, he's sort of he kept that. He kept him in sight a little bit, but then he sort of lost sight of him. <clears throat> and he started to ask people, did anybody see here a big Ukrainian soldier? Did anyone see? The people said, why? He stole my money. All of a sudden from this bar comes out this big sort of officer. And this officer comes over to the Jew and says, what are you looking for, Jew? Says, a soldier, one of your soldiers, did you just come here with the big, yes, we just came here. What do you want? One of your soldiers stole my money. He said, my soldiers stole your money, huh? And so he takes this Jew and he grabs him from the lapels and he lifts him up. And he says, Jew, you have just signed your own death warrant. My soldiers are not thieves. That is a disgusting lie. You have spoken against one of the soldiers of the king. Tomorrow morning, we're making a, the, in the morning, everybody has to, what it is, they line up. What's it called? A, a mizdar. They have to stand at attention in the morning. What if there's a word for it. <clears throat> and all the soldiers are going to be standing up in order. Five o'clock in the morning, I want you to be here, here in the marketplace. And I want you to tell me which soldier was the one that stole your money. And if you don't tell me, then your life is finished. And let's see your papers. Let's see, everybody had to have papers, right? That permission, what's your papers? He wrote down his name. He says, okay, that's it. Tomorrow you don't see me. You don't come here, you don't show up tomorrow five in the morning, or you do show up and you don't tell me which one is the right soldier, right? You can't tell me which one is the soldier. Then you're going to get killed and your house is going to get burned down. So this Jew, well, he lets the Jew down and the Jew thinks, whoa, 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 what did I do? What did I do? 
I couldn't just let the guy run away with my money. I had to do something. But now I've jumped from the fire pan into the fire. So he runs to the Shpala Zaidi. He runs to the Sab of Shpali and says, please, can you help me? He tells him the whole story. The Shpala Zaidi says, don't worry. You have nothing to worry about. You go in the morning, five o'clock in the morning, you walk by these soldiers and the soldier who's gritting his teeth, <coughs> that's the one that stole your money. So he said, okay. Goes there five o'clock in the morning, all the soldiers are standing, they're huge. These soldiers, they're just huge and they're fierce. <clears throat> and he starts walking between the soldiers. And oh, the, the commander says, oh, it's you, Jew. I didn't think you'd show up. Oh yeah, right, I said I was gonna kill you. That's right, sure. Okay, so it's not surprising. Now, now, now let's see you find who stole your money. You're a liar, no one stole your money. You're fine. So he goes, uh, the Jew walks between the people, he's looking at them. Sure enough, he walks by one of the soldiers, a huge guy. He's going <laughs> with his teeth. And he says, uh, Commander, him, he stole the money. So the commander says, goes, walks up to him and says, you, Stanislas, you stole the money of this Jew. Answer me. And the soldier says, I did not steal the money of the Jew. He's a liar, a disgusting liar. All the Jews are liars. They all didn't style and steal his money. That money is mine. Everything the Jews own is mine. Everything the Jews belong, they stole it anyway. They stole it from us. We have the right to take anything back we want. It's a, the commander said, so you did? You took the money from him? Said, I didn't take it. What do you mean I took the money? I didn't take any money. It's my money. I just put it in my... Oh, you did take the money from him, huh? Have him beaten. So... Two big soldiers grab a hold of this guy and they take off his shirt. And they take him to the side and they're beating him. He's screaming and ah, yelling. And the poor Jew, you know. And so the, the, the commander picks up this guy's coat. He says, here, take, this is the, your money. The Jew says, yeah, that, 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 that's it. He says, here, take your money. Okay, now tell me, how did you know that's, how did you know that was him? There's no possible way you can, all these soldiers look the same. They're all two heads higher than you. How do you know? But half of them have mustaches, have just like he does. How did you know? Says, I want you to tell me. Lifts him up again, starts shaking him. Says, no, I went to the, the, this tzaddik. His name is Saba Mishpoli, the Saba. And he was the one who told me. He said, so he said, uh, he said okay, tomorrow morning, five o'clock in the morning, we're making another lineup in the morning. Right? I want you to bring this rabbi of yours here. I want you to bring him here. I want to talk to him. And if he doesn't come, you don't bring him. I'll ask around where he lives and I'll kill him and you and burn both of your houses down. Now get out of here. So this says, whoa, 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 whoa. What did I do now? What have I done now? No, I've got the Rebbe in this thing also. Oh, I should have never started. What can I do? Anyway, so he goes to the Rebbe and he tells him the whole story. He says, Rebbe, what am I going to do? So the Rebbe says, don't worry. Be calm. Nothing to worry about. Tomorrow you go there and tell him that I refuse to come. He says, but Rebbe, you don't know what that means. You don't, these guys are serious. They're really serious. He has like a hundred soldiers there. They could, that, he says, listen, listen to what I'm saying. You don't worry. You tell him that your rabbi said that he's not going to come, but tell him like this. That if he wants to know, tell this commander, tell him that if he wants to know what's really happening, then he should check in his own pocket. He said, I'm going to say this to the commander. He says, not, he's not a commander, he's a general. And you tell him, general, if you want to know what's really happening, check in your own pocket. He says, are you sure you're not going to come? You don't want to come, Rabbi. Maybe you tell him. He says, you go and tell him. So next morning, five o'clock in the morning, there's this poor Jew. He hasn't slept the whole night, two nights already. And he's standing there, his, his knees are shaking, they're knocking. The commander says, ah, it's you, Jew. Oh, you came back. Huh? I see you've got a little, you're a lot smarter than you look. Where's your rabbi? Said, <laughs> said my rabbi. 
So where's your rabbi? Where is he? He said, my rabbi said that he's not going to come. He's not going to come. He's not going to come. He reaches, takes out his gun. He has a gun. He cocks the trigger. He says, he's not going to come. Well, I'm going to, he says, one, just one second. But my rabbi had a message for you. He said, if you want to know what's happening, look in your own pocket. I said, what? He says, if you want to know what's happening, look in your own pocket. So he uncocks the gun, puts it back in, reaches in his pocket. There's nothing, reaches in his other pocket. There's an envelope. Takes out the envelope. He looks at the envelope. He th- opens it up. His eyes get big. He takes out his gun, puts it to his own head, and shoots himself, kills himself. The general. And all the soldiers see their general killed himself. And his body is laying on the ground, all shaking, and there's blood everywhere. And meanwhile, this Jew makes his getaway. <laughs> he goes back to the Rebbe. And he's all shaking and all trembling. He's all pale. And the Rebbe said he killed himself, right? He said, yeah, he did. He killed himself. How did you know? The Rebbe said, you should know that this evil man, this general, he not only hates the Jews, he hates everybody. And he had a plan to kill the king. And he sent, he hired a special assassin to kill the king. And he sent a letter to the king to tell the king to meet him in a certain place. The king is his best friend. And he had a secret that he wanted to tell him. A certain, certain, certain secluded place. That he had a big secret that he wanted to tell him, which is relevant to the secret, to the welfare of the whole entire country. And he sent another letter to the assassin telling him, that at such and such a time, the king is going to be with him in a certain place. He should come and kill the king there. Well, he made a mistake. And he sent the letter that he was supposed to send to the assassin. He sent that letter to the king. So the king received the letter saying, Dear assassin, come and kill the king at such and such a place. I'm going to be with you. He reached in his pocket and he realized that the letter that he had, it was addressed to the assassin, but he opened it up and he realized that was the letter he was supposed to send to the king. So the king, the letter that was supposed to send to the king said, meet me in such a place. That was still in his pocket, right? That was still in his pocket. And the letter that he was supposed to send to the assassin later on, that letter he put by mistake into the envelope to the king, gave it to the king, the king saw. As soon as he realized that, so the king, he knew the king would obviously take revenge on him. He would kill him, probably kill his whole family, he would d- disgrace his name forever. So he realized that he had no choice except to kill himself. So that's how the Shpola Zaidi saved this Jew and saved the day and got rid of a evil anti-Semite and came to Yelano so it will be to us. Have a good day, everyone. Good story. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> <Hold on. laughs>